Hey, what's going on? It's Stranger for Off Center DJ School, and today we're gonna walk you through on how I make bass lines with one of my go to synths, Serum. Serum is a wavetable synthesizer, and a wavetable is basically a small clip of audio broken down into a number of frames. You oscillate one of those frames, which is what you end up hearing. If you've ever used a massive, then Serum is a lot like it, except it's more visual. So I find it more intuitive. So let's get right into some basics and then we're gonna be on our way to making some grimy bass lines. All right, so we're just gonna get right into it. I'm gonna pull up Serum here. And Serum has three oscillators and each one of these oscillators produce a signal contributing to the final sound that you hear. There's oscillator A, there's oscillator B, and there's a sub oscillator. Now we're just gonna focus on oscillator A Okay, and by default, oscillator A is set to a sawtooth. Now I'm going to click on default here and then a menu will pop up and this will show you a number of different wavetables that you can select from to create your sound. One of my favorite wavetables is found under the digital section and it's called distorted bass dropper. So we're going to start here. Let's hear how it sounds. Now look over here and this is where we get a visual representation of your waveform. If you click on here, then you get a three dimensional view of your wavetable. The yellow waveform indicates the current frame that is being selected when you play your sound. Now look here at the wavetable position knob. If you click and drag it, you can change the position or the frame of your wavetable. Now let's hear how it sounds while we change the wavetable position. All right, now we're gonna play with modulating the wavetable position. And what that means is changing the position over time. And there's a number of ways we can do this. We can use an envelope or an LFO. We're gonna start with an envelope and we're gonna select envelope two because envelope one is dedicated to the volume of your sound. So we don't wanna go there. So I'm gonna click on envelope two and then you'll get kind of like a crosshair icon. We're gonna click on that crosshair icon and drag it over to wavetable position. We now get a blue ring around the wavetable position knob. That's indicating the maximum amount of modulation when we modulate the signal. If we click and drag down this little horseshoe icon, you can adjust the maximum modulation amount. Let's bring it up to here. Now we're not gonna hear anything until we start adjusting the parameters of envelope two. So I'm gonna adjust the attack of envelope two and that specifies how long it takes your envelope to reach the starting point of your modulation to the maximum amount. Now notice when I play my sound, there's gonna be a, a blue dot indicating where the wavetable position currently is in your modulation. So listen and watch for the indicator. Now let's increase the maximum amount. Now let's try decreasing the attack. We're gonna set it to around 1.3 seconds. Okay. All right, so far so good, sounding pretty grimy. Now take a look here where it says unison. This simply multiplies the number of signals that you're hearing, ultimately making the sound fatter. So you can increase it to two, three, all the way up to a maximum of 16. I usually go to a max of five or six. So now basically what is happening is there's five of the same signals playing the same note. It's kind of like playing a flute or having five flutes playing together. The one with five will sound a lot more richer. There's more timber to the sound. Now you can adjust the tuning of each one of these signals by changing the detune knob here. And the closer these lines are, the closer the tuning of each signal. So let's start in the beginning. 
And notice how the, the sound changes as we increase the detuning of the multipliers. It's all about using your ear and finding that sweet spot. I'm going to select it around here. Okay. Now the blending is simply the mix between the main signal and its copies. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to apply a filter to our sound. And basically a filter allows certain frequencies to pass through and certain frequencies to not pass through. And there's a number of different filters that you can select from. You can have high pass filters which only allow high frequencies to pass through and low pass filters which is the opposite and only low frequencies pass through. I like using the low 24. I find it sounds pretty fat. Now the next step is to adjust the cutoff frequency of your filter. And the lower you go, the less high frequencies that pass through. We're going to start here and then we're going to modulate the cutoff. So I'm going to use envelope 2 again and drag it over to cutoff. So now envelope 2 is modulating the cutoff. I'm going to add a bit of drive. That simply overdrives the signal for added warmth. Similarly, the fat signal adds some fatness to your sound. Okay. And we're going to add one more step to your modulation. We're going to go over here to LFO. And we're going to modulate the wavetable position with the LFO. So not only is the envelope going to be modulating the position, the LFO will also be modulating the position. An LFO is like an envelope except it repeats itself until you let go of a note. Now I'm going to adjust the max amount of my LFO modulation. Again by clicking on the horseshoe icon here and dragging it down. Now I'm going to change the rate, which is the speed of my LFO. I like 1 8. Okay, now on to my favorite part, which is the effects section. I'm going to click on effects here at the top. I'm going to add the hyper dimension effect, which is kind of like unison mode. It adds a little more richness by multiplying the signal. And I'm just going to adjust the uh, the dry wet mix here. I'm going to add some distortion and increase the drive here. Now there's a number of different distortion algorithms here. I like the tube one. There's a hard clip as well. But let's stick with tube. And finally, I'm going to enable the compressor and click on multiband here. What this does is it smashes the signal and really brings out some of those hidden harmonics, which is how you get those really grimy sounds. All right, I'm liking what I hear. So let's sequence a few notes with a basic drum and bass beat. I'm going to put an F note here and duplicate a couple times, change the fourth note. Let's hear how it sounds. All right, that's sounding pretty good. So we went over some basics on how to create your own sound with Serum. And if you really practice these techniques, you're on your way to making some grimy sounds. So keep at it, and we'll check you on the other side. Peace.